просто динамичнее, что там требует залишить. А, шановные коллеги. Dear colleagues, the Ukrainian Crisis Media Center starts it, resumes its work and we start with a very interesting topic, a briefing the Ukrainian scientists for the anti-terrorist operation, unique uh, developments that may save lives. Thank you very much. This we thank the Ukrainian Crisis Media Center that is established here at the Ukrainian House. I am the first Vice President of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, and I am responsible for physical and technical sciences there. I am Anton Naumovitz, and I am the full academician. I want to tell you that the National Academy of Sciences with a great responsibility treats the resolution of the problems that we are now facing. First of all, this is combat action in uh, Donetsk region. And I want to tell you that recently our academy has adopted a special program of uh, research devoted to the works aimed at the raising the level of uh, defense capability of our country. We have uh, conducted a contest, and uh, there was a very active participation in this contest. We got a lot of proposals and entries. Then we conducted an analysis of those entries with the participation of some institutions of the Ministry of Defense and the Ukrainian defense industry, is so that those uh, developments and suggestions would be really interesting for our defense. And uh, with a view of implementing them within one or two years, and used for the liquidation of those after effects, when we talk about health of our fighters and also where armaments are concerned. Today we want to present to you three developments that are of dual use, which means that they may be used both in military sphere, including combat action, and in particular for the treatment of our fighters, and also in with civilian names to treat ordinary citizens. This is the best case when, the te when technologies have dual use and dual purpose. So this is my short introduction, and now I give the floor to my colleagues who are here. They represent three institutes of our National Academy of Sciences, and every one of them will introduce themselves and tell about the technologies that they are developing, which we think can and must find broad use. Thank you for attention. So you are the first to speak. Thank you. I am Petro Manorik. I am a head of a department at the Institute of Physical Chemistry, named after Pesarzhevsky, of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. Uh, shall I uh, tell anything else? Yeah, please introduce your invention. I want to tell you at once that this is not just the result of uh, the work of scientists of the National Academy of Sciences. There were also uh, there was also involvement of the Institute of Traumatology and Cardiology of the Academy of Medical Sciences of Ukraine, and it is because of this close cooperation between chemist, uh, chemists and doctors, including. Pre doctor practitioners who are traumatologists and two of them are instructors on field medicine and they know all the technical requirements to different products. We were able within a rather short 
period to develop a uh, blood stopping uh, means, which uh, is first of all for the use on the front line to provide non-qualified pre-medical help to stop uh, blood spillage, hemorrhage, and with the help of such uh, device, we may rather swiftly stop the blood flow and uh, prepare the wounded person for transportation where to some other place for a military hospital rather close to the front line or somewhere in Odessa or Kiev where they can be given a proper medical treatment. Over this time, practically the scientific and technological part of the invention, we have already completed this. We have uh, devices of the necessary sort. I can show some to you. This is to uh, stop massive blood spillage and this is to be put on the uh, head or cranial uh, void and this is a packed bandage which by its size resembles quicot or salix it's uh, three meters sixty long and it is and it is pressed so that it can be uh, used as a tampon to stop the blood flowing from the wound. I'll hold the mic and you'll show the devices. So here are the fragments, but practically this is the same material. Here it is not composed as a accordion, but I can tell you, I, I can show you how this is done. Rather swiftly you can bandage the and uh, tampon the wound, gauge the wound. In fact, today uh, the invention is ready and we are ready to register this as a uh, means of medical treatment. We have all the scientific and other documentation. We have reports on uh, preclinical and clinical experiments on laboratory animals, which were conducted at the Physiology Institute named after Bohomolitz. However, what is still to be done on the tag that will be glued to the packaging you have to write the name of the factory that produced it and also you have to specify the name of the manufacturer in the in uh, the data that is on the packaging this is so now we are not within a scientific search but we are searching for an enterprise that would undertake to produce uh, this bandaging. Uh, the talks are rather slow and we would like some help from the state because the price of the issue according to preliminary assessment is uh, almost a million euro, uh, euros but this will provide both for the military medicine including the armed forces, national guards, bodyguards, and the security service of Ukraine, and the ambulances, and all the uh, civil, civilian medicine, because Krovospas, blood savior, is a name for the entire family of such means, including serviettes, napkins, uh, that we plan to manufacture in three sizes and these means are needed not only in every household but for instance in a medical kit for car drivers and car owners this is absolutely necessary when a traffic accident takes place you have seen many times that when there there is an accident before the ambulance comes people die 
because there is no such a device. So we call upon everyone who is concerned and interested to take part in Im the implementing these devices. We have calculations and there is a business plan of uh, returning the money within two years with a rather good profit in the future. So we would like to involve both patriots and of course an optimum uh, uh, option would be if there if we could find a patriot entrepreneur who would have money we are patriots but we don't have money enough for this project so this is uh, is there a permit from the ministry there could not be a permit because we have not filed the documents for registration because it is the enterprise that manufactures the devices should file for registering the device. And you know, we have sterile samples that would be used for preclinical and clinical tests, but we still cannot file for registration just because we don't have an enterprise that would manufacture this. And without them, no one will accept documents for us. I would say that the meaning of this device invention is that if it is introduced, then we will have additional jobs created. You have raised a very important issue, thank you, because there were proposals from uh, abroad and if for us this would be just a commercial project, we could uh, give it out to uh, some foreigner get a piece of uh, meat and get away, as there is a Ukrainian saying. But for us it is important that this device is manufactured at a uh, Ukrainian enterprise so that the help to the Ukrainian army and everyone who takes part in this uh, fight there were also some money channeled to the pension fund and all this. Thank you, and we will ask questions later. Uh, first, all the presentations. Volodymyr. Thank you. I'm Volodymyr Neymar. Uh, I am uh, the head of the Laboratory of Radiation Technologies of the Institute of Physics of the National Academy of Sciences, but I am here representing not just the institute, but the group of scientists from the Shevchenko University, from the uh, chemical plant and Polytechnical uh, Institute, which uh, got united uh, into a voluntary project uh, directed towards development of so-called bandages uh, on the basis of hydrogels. Uh, this is the sample of such bandage. This is in uh, an insulated package. There is a substance which uh, is of gel, uh, in the gel form. And when we unpack it, we take it, and we can put it on wounds, apply it to wounds. It looks like that. You apply it to a wood, wound that's anti-burn, bandage. That material is made of water. 90% of that is water, and it cools down the wound, and it is important. Uh, uh, especially the first hour after the burn. That is the uh, something to help in the first uh, medical assistance during burns. This cooling down leads to um, relieving the pain, but if we add uh, some uh, painkiller into this water, then this will produce additional effect. At the same time, when uh, this bandage is put on a wound, it uh, 
insulates the wound from the impact of the environment, which is important, especially in the field where there's dust and uh, dirt uh, and the infection shouldn't get into the wound. The structurally, that's a material which could be called micro uh, sponge, um, polymer um, molecules which are fast, uh, and uh, also the radicals which are created during irradiation. And uh, the size of that uh, uh, cell is one micrometer. That, uh, uh, the, the water can uh, pass uh, through it and not the microbes. Uh, so this wound on a, this, this bandage on the wound protects from dust. You can uh, put water on it for, even from uh, any pond. This will uh, give additional cooling, uh, but uh, it will uh, the water will be pure. If this micro sponge, if you add some additional substances which would uh, stimulate the coagulation of blood and the absorption of the uh, materials uh, uh, from the wound, then it uh, makes the uh, it is uh, also executing the function of stopping the blood. And in case of capilla bleeding, which also uh, become quite problematic in the field conditions. So that is uh, uh, very important. The main thing is that this bandage does not stick to a wound. The wet doesn't stick to a wet. If you had an experience taking off the bandage from a wound uh, where, uh, which was bleeding, you know what the feeling is. But here it doesn't happen. You can take it uh, off without any pain. There are also some other advantages which uh, make this material uh, such which could be used not just for burns and open wounds but also for treating of uh, different ulcers uh, depending on uh, what uh, uh, solution will be added into that and it could be applied uh, in many uh, regular um, peace uh, regular situations in peaceful life and this uh, will uh, uh, attract investors uh, and producers who can start producing this good uh, because we don't have it in our Ukrainian market uh, this is what we developed because the volunteers needed the volunteers by abroad similar bandages, they send it to ATO zone and they use that in our central military hospital in Kiev. We have not uh, invented anything new. These materials have been known for 20 years and they have been in existence in the market for 10 years, but they have never been produced in our country and they are not produced. And our work is uh, to uh, develop own technology of how to make such materials with the characteristics which are close to imported prototypes. And now uh, we are planning to get all the necessary permits, uh, uh, have that um, inspected uh, and um, examined them and that is what delays uh, the production because now we could have uh, started producing them in small batches at least uh, having the capacities that we have in the institute of physics uh, the specific feature of that technology is that uh, the 
uh, ionizing radiation is used. In our case, we are using the linear electronic uh, accelerator, which could be called the uh, electronic uh, radiation gun, which is very powerful, and that uh, makes uh, the solution uh, uh, to be to, to, to be transformed into such a substance and uh, um, the main requirement is to have a very powerful source uh, of uh, uh, irradiation and um, acceleration we have that and uh, combining our efforts with the uh, medical specialists. Uh, we are ready to cooperate with the producers who can take it from laboratory technology to the at least pilot production so that we can produce at least 1,000 of such bandages, uh, at least 1,000 a week. That is the main information, and I would like to draw your attention, uh, the attention of those who could be interested in uh, uh, quite profitable uh, invest to, to this profitable investment. I believe that this thing will be used. It is used all over the world, and we should have that. So thank you for attention. And. Uh, uh, the last but not the least, I will speak Russian. I am uh, the research uh, uh, from Francevich Institute of Material Science, and I am working on implants to restore the uh, uh, tissues which are damaged, and I will present the results of several institutes which are directed towards uh, the um, making the uh, bone imp implant and the biological material is the material from which the uh, thing is made which is put into the human body and there are two main requirements to that mechanical and biological uh, uh, the mechanical one the mechanical uh, properties of implant and coincide with the uh, mechanical properties of the bone which they replace and the main criteria of assessment is the module uh, which uh, is uh, important uh, and uh, by uh, compatibility the best criteria of assessment is the thickness of fibrosis capsule which is formed in the body of a human being. If such implantant is uh, inserted into the body, the body uh, is trying, uh, any implantant causes reaction, the uh, body is trying to push it out. Uh, if it do doesn't uh, uh, make that, then it encapsules it and uh, then pathologically thick capsule can be formed, which then can turn into oncology, and uh, uh, the thinner the capsule is, uh, the longer will uh, implant and uh, serve. Uh, ideally, if biological and mechanical compatibility coincide, uh, uh, they should come inside. There is such, there are such materials which are perceived by. Uh, body as uh, the own body and uh, these are calcium phosphate materials and we are developing such materials they are put into the um, bone tissue and they are getting replaced the advantage uh, compared to the foreign uh, uh, they are much cheaper, but also we have uh, different uh, of such materials which can uh, make uh, uh, different types of them, starting from nano powder to quite large products. Uh, and another advantage uh, is that we can uh, make uh, 
what we can make of them. The surgeons can use them because the price is not high and uh, we can make many of them also what we can uh, we, we can regulate some properties and technologically we can uh, uh, put some coating on metal metal implants you see the fragment of a knee which is replaced by the ceramic made of our material and uh, it is absolutely similar to mineral component of the bone tissue knee the, this is the case when the material is absolutely replaced. Uh, this material is put uh, into the jaw and then uh, uh, you can see how the material is absolutely, uh, absolutely replaces the bone uh, tissue. Here you can see uh, how um, the hollow which exists in the lower jaw uh, cavity in the lower jaw after we put our material there the bone uh, tissue has been restored in a month this uh, ceramic uh, has uh, uh, not sufficient mechanical properties unfortunately and that is why we can uh, uh, make compos compositions with metallic uh, implants and the coating for meta metal is uh, uh, developed together with Peyton um, Institute. Uh, our coating was examined in Poland and Canada and they even invited us to make such uh, uh, products uh, there. You see these implants with coating and you see the cylinders with coating and without the coating uh, we have received permits for such materials and there are new directions for which we don't have any permits but they are highly prospective first of all these are the artificial um, um, hip um, and we use the, um, this artificial hip, uh, which we import, but the price is very high. And most people who need them uh, cannot afford them. the implants, implants which are in the market. They cannot serve long because the material that they are made of uh, is not the best one. Here is uh, the leg of the hip. Uh, um, artificial hip uh, is made of one material and the head of a different material which is quite toxic uh, and uh, such uh, artificial hips uh, are to be replaced quite often and that is why in our institute we have developed new titanium uh, alloys uh, which mechanically and biologically are very close to bone tissue and they are biocompatible. We uh, replace certain materials by others. And now if we make such artificial joints of these materials, such uh, artificial joint can uh, last for 10 years. Also, we develop the heads, which are not made of cobalt, and uh, but uh, of nanotitan. And such heads, uh, um, again, they, they uh, um, increase the biocompatibility of a joint. And these are endoprotheses, which are so important in our situation, because uh, uh, where, uh, uh, there are cases when big parts of bones are damaged, and even before our situation in Ukraine, we received such endoprotheses for two joints, and their cost was very high. The cost is about $17,000. 
and now for us they are absolutely uh, very expensive. The specialists of our institute have developed new constructions and new devices uh, uh, for these endo processes, uh, endo prosthetics, and we would be able to rather swiftly manufacture them when they will be high quality and uh, competitive and the prosthetics of uh, dual use that could also be present on the foreign market they do not uh, they are not of lesser quality but they uh, may be of a longer duration so and of course the manufacture of our endoprosthetics will give additional jobs and will give additional hope to people who are disabled at the moment. Could you be more precise about the state of the projects? Uh, as far as I understand, your project is uh, most is the closest to manufacturing. What is the state as of today? We have uh, filed this projects to every context and at the moment we one of our projects was accepted we are very glad and we hope that we will be able to perform a great leap in this direction and the uh, thing is stolen because in ukraine there's an abyss between scientific development and manufacture because the enterprises you know they are already manufacturing something and they do not want to change anything if they are told that they will get profit out of it they say first you pay us and then we will do something we don't have such money and so we hope very much that at the moment that now we will be able to uh, bring the process to completion. Although, for instance, the enterprosthetics that I've shown you has not passed, uh, has not won at a contest. Any questions, colleagues? I have a question. Could you please tell us, as far as I understood, the road between scientific development and manufacture is very long. Whether any attempts with the view of the situation that is in the country, you know, we cannot act according to ordinary procedures. Whether any attempts from the Ministry of Defense or other ministries to contact you directly, and my question goes to every participant in this um, briefing and uh, if there were such meetings what were the results you know we tried i even made a presentation at the ministry of uh, public health but this was last summer and uh, then they did not think this issue to be of such an importance However, our colleagues from the Super Hard Materials Institute and from the Paton Electrical Wielding Institute are trying to find such connections and contacts. We do not sit on our hands. We are doing everything we can. I want to add something about the bringing of scientific research uh, to manufacture stage. There is another way that we are now testing at the Physics Institute of the Academy of Sciences, the creation of uh, our own enterprises, so-called startups, as they uh, do this in the West. So some workers of the Institute have uh, created an enterprise, it is called Raditech, and uh, the aim of the enterprise is to bring uh, the completed technological developments to manufacture because it is uh, true that huge enterprises cannot uh, cannot uh, allow themselves to conduct these uh, scientific research 
we now have a stalled cooperation with Borshehivka chemical pharmacy plant where people have to get a uh, ready industrial technology that does bring profit but uh, does not take money when away from them and on this during this interval because of the efforts of uh, small and medium sized businesses because uh, of the efforts of such startups you can bring the development to the uh, stage where it is appropriately used and uh, even at the stage of pilot technologies you can create additional jobs this is what we do with our bandages and I hope that we will be able to offer a kind of produce that will be at least twice as cheap as this as that that we get from abroad and I want to add something you know you have raised a very painful problem which is about the fact that in Ukraine there's uh, no favorable innovation climate and this is the question to the government we will be very much obliged and grateful to the journalists if they together with the academy of sciences will persuade the government and the parliament that they should adopt a legislation that should stimulate that would stimulate the business to introduce innovation technologies and military technologies so we hope for your support as uh, without this there is no opportunity to develop uh, the manufacturing at large scale as these uh, uh, scientific research results deserve i also want to add uh, that you know the blood savior technology was developed exclusively on voluntary basis by specialists from various institutes we haven't got a single penny from the state but of course there are things that are critical critically important for the state we need modern armaments we need modern communication means but blood savior is also a critical thing that is drastically needed by the army to successfully defend ukraine so in this case we are talking to many institutions and uh, we contacted practically all Kiev enterprises they are thinking but this is you know being protracted and protracted and can last very long and we need this device and this means today and we need it not in Kiev but in Donetsk and Luhansk regions first of all so in the case of blood savior we would like to see some steps to meet us on the side that uh, people in power should undertake for instance the minister of defense know very well about this research they were present during tests on laboratory animals and they were very much pleased with the price and with the work that the device does but no one does anything we try to find some contacts with business circles but there's zero effort from the state we would like someone there to to make some movements and we have uh, foreign journalists and uh, uh, this is a French journalist. We have a question. Uh, 
So first of all, I am very glad to be here and I'm very interested in this presentation. My question is about uh, Krovos Pass. As far as I understand, your development is uh, most close to being introduced to the market. So the question is, you mentioned that your development can be also used not only for military purposes, but for civilian purposes as well. Are you thinking about uh, implementing this later in civ for civilian needs? Yes, of course. And this is the strength and uh, and the strengths of such uh, technologies that are of dual purpose and the use could be that we could fill at least our internal market, domestic market, and we create new jobs and people would be able to get such high technologies at a lower price. So my request to journalists is we should demand from our government so that they act swifter because we see how much inertia there is in our system, how slowly they respond to the problems we are facing. For instance, if uh, we talk about clinical tests, uh, then they talk about giving a lot of money, first of all. We understand this all, but the state shall uh, help us because the situation does require immediate action. Thank you very much. Thank you for not surrendering. Thank you for applying your voluntary efforts, for creating a lot of things that can save lives. And I hope that today's briefing is the start of the things that you were talking about, that you will be heeded and uh, Thank you, everyone, for attention, for coming here, and I hope that you will tell the truth about what we are doing.